Monday, July 7th, 2008, San Diego Union Tribune article uh, titled Free Speech Not Guaranteed on Popular Websites uh, by Enik Jezdanen. Uh, subtitle Controversial but Legal Items Are Often Removed. Uh, Associated Press, New York. Rant all you want in a public park, a police officer generally won't eject you for your remarks however unpopular or provocative. Say it on the internet, and you'll find that free speech and other cons constitutional rights are anything but guaranteed. Companies in charge of seemingly public spaces online wipe out content that's controversial but otherwise legal. Service providers write their own rules for users worldwide and set foreign policy when they cooperate with, re with regimes like China. They serve as prosecutor, judge, and jury in handling disputes be behind closed doors. The governmental role that companies play online is taking on greater importance as their services, from online hangouts to virtual repositories of photos and video, become more central to public discourse around the world. It's a fallout of the Internet's market-driven growth, but possible remedies, including government regulations, can be worse than the symptoms. Dutch photographer Martin Doors met the limits of free speech at Yahoo's photo-sharing service Flickr when he posted an image of an early adolescent boy with disheveled hair and a ragged t-shirt staring blankly with a lit cigarette in his mouth. Uh, and that is the picture. Uh, without notice, Yahoo deleted the photo on grounds it violated an unwritten ban on depicting children smoking. Doors eventually convinced a Yahoo manager that Far from promoting smoking, the photo had value as a statement on poverty and street life in Romania. Another employee deleted it again a few months later. There may be legitimate reasons to take action, such as to stop spam, security threats, copyright infringement, and child pornography, but many cases aren't clear-cut, and balancing competing needs can get thorny. In Dora's case, the law is fully with Yahoo, in terms of service similar to those of other service providers, gives Yahoo sole discretion to pre-screen, refuse, or remove any content. Service providers aren't required to police content, but they aren't prohibited from doing so. Uh, while, mon while mindful of free speech and other rights, Yahoo and other companies say they must craft and enforce guidelines that go beyond legal requirements to protect their brands and foster safe, enjoyable communities, ones where minors may be roaming. Uh, that's where the whole, you know, adults only, or, you know, you must be this old procedure. Uh, guidelines help engender a positive community experience, one to which users will want to return, said Ann Toth, Yahoo's Vice President for Policy. Doors ultima ultimately got his photo restored a second time, and Yahoo has apologized, acknowledging its community managers want went too far. But that underscores another consequence of having online commons controlled by private corporations. Rules aren't always clear. Enforcement is inconsistent, and uh, users can find content removed or accounts terminated without a hearing. Appeals are solely at the service provider's discretion. Users get caught in the crossfire as hundreds of individual service representatives apply their own interpretations of corporate policies, sometimes imposing personal agendas or misreading guidelines. Verizon Wireless barred an abortion rights group from obtaining a short code for conducting text messaging campaigns. While LiveJournal suspended legitimate blogs on fiction and crime victims, in a crackdown on pedophilia. Two lions critici criticizing President Bush disappeared from AT&T's webcast of a Pearl Jam concert. All three decisions were reversed only after senior executives intervened amid complaints. Better safe than sorry. Uh, inconsistencies and, and mysteries behind decisions lead to perceptions that content is being stricken merely for being unpopular. First Amendment protections generally do not extend to private property in the physical world, allowing a shopping mall to legally kick out a customer wearing a t-shirt with a picture of a smoking child. With online services becoming greater conduits than shopping malls for public communications, however, some advocacy groups believe the federal government needs to guarantee open access to speech. That, of course, could also invite meddling by the government, the way broadcasters now face indecency and other restrictions that are criticized as vague. Uh, but isn't it the FCC, which is the government? Uh, others believe companies shouldn't police content at all, and if they do, they should at least make clearer the rules and the mechanisms for appeal. 
quote, vagueness does not inspire the confidence of people and leaves room for gaming the system by outside groups, uh, said Lauren Weinstein, a veteran computer scientist and internet activist. Quote, when the rules are clear and the grievance procedures are clear, then people know what they are working with and they at least have a starting point in urging changes in those rules. End quote. But Marjorie Hines, director of the Free Expression Policy Project, questions whether the private sector is equipped to handle such matters. She said, written rules mean little when service representatives applying them, quote, tend to be tone deaf. They don't see context, end quote. <coughs> At least when a court order or other governmental action is involved, quote, there's more of a guarantee or of due process protection, said Robin Gross, uh, executive director of the Civil Liberties Group IP Justice. With a private company, users' rights are limited to the service provider's contractual terms of services. Service providers say unhappy customers can always go elsewhere, but choice is often limited. Many leading services, particularly Hangouts such as Facebook and news course MySpace, or media sharing sites such as Flickr and Google's YouTube have acquired a cachet that cannot be replicated. To evict a user from an online community would be like banning that person to the outskirts of town. Other sites, quote, don't have the critical mass. No one would see it, end quote, said Scott Kerr, a member of the gay punk band Kids on TV, which found its profile mysteriously deleted from MySpace last year. People know that MySpace is the biggest site that contains music, end quote. MySpace denies engaging in any censorship and says profiles removed are generally in response to complaints of spam and other abuses. Service provider GoDaddy.com also defends its commitment to speech, saying account suspensions are a last resort. Few service providers actively review content before it gets posted and usually take action only in response to complaints. In that sense, Flickr, YouTube, and other sites consider the reviews checks and balances against any community mob directed at unpopular speech. YouTube has pointedly refused to delete many video clips tied to Muslim extremists, for instance, because they didn't specifically contain violence or hate speech. Still, should these sites even make such rules, and how can they ensure the guidelines, guidelines are consistently enforced? YouTube has policies against showing people getting hurt, attacked, or humiliated, but <laughs> that's what Break.com is all about. Uh, banning even clips okay for TV news shows. But how is YouTube to know whether a video clip shows real violence or actors portraying it? Either way, showing the video is legal and may provoke useful discussions on brutality. Unwilling to play the role of arbiter, the group messaging service Twitter has resisted pressure to tighten its rules. What counts as name-calling? What counts as making fun of someone in a way that's good-natured, said Jason Golden. Twitter's director of program management. There are sites that do employ teams of people that do that investigation, but we feel that that's a job we wouldn't do well.